How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Data here and welcome back to episode number three of the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode headed into the 2024 postseason here in year number one on our brand new franchise mode series here on NHL 24. In the last one we capped off a great first year with the Canucks going 47, 30 and 5, a good enough record to win the Pacific Division and finish sixth best in the NHL. On top of our record we had a power play that was close to the top of the NHL at 19.1% and a penalty kill which was a pretty average at 83.3 but really the theme of last episode was exceeding expectations winning the Pacific Division for the first time in a decade winning the fifth most games in Canucks franchise history and hey making the postseason for just the third time in the last 11 years so it is all smiles in Vancouver on top of that as you can see Andre Kuzmenko the one point per game player on our squad this year as you can see by the comments going along the bottom many people voting for him as the MVP of the year. 27 goals and 55 assists for Kuzmenko in his sophomore NHL season. And I hadn't noticed this, only three minor penalties. Six penalty minutes for Kuzmenko, so possibly Lady Bing conversation there. Elias Pettersson as well, 75 points, 33 goals, only two minor penalties or one double minor. Four penalty minutes for Elias Pettersson, 75 points for him. Brock Besser on the top line had a great year, 67 points. JT Miller a down year at 60. Philippe Dano, his first year as a Canuck, 56 points, but a negative 20. Our best defensive player, you would think, a negative 20 because of the line chemistry on the second line. Not really clicking there. We'll get into that in a moment. Quinn Hughes had a great second half. He finished with 56 points. Heronic 54 was a big surprise. Beauvillier, 44. Hoaglander turned it around, 37. Nice to see from the young 23-year-old. But Colson, 25. And down the list we go. Studnika got in the lineup after the Mikhaev trade, scoring 14 points. Phil Kessel, we signed him from free agency for depth scoring and leadership. 7 points in 41 games. And all in all, just pretty content with the squad that we have here. Chatfield also picked up from the Hurricanes in the Mikhaev trade. And when it came to goaltending, Thatcher Demko was very solid, winning 36 games. He had good numbers as well with six shutouts, but Casey DeSmith was very solid in relief. 927 save percentage, 2.42 goals against average. So everything really came together. I gotta admit that we really exceeded our expectations here in Vancouver in year number one. I know the Canucks are doing very well in the real world right now, but in EA land, with these overalls, with these types of simulation players we were not expecting this in year number one we've won the pacific division we've brought some joy back to vancouver third postseason berth in the last 11 years one for one under gm data and his team now let's have some fun in the postseason you know what maybe make a run out of it and I kind of say that having been inspired by this comment from Redinho, who said, I really think this team is geared up for a deep run because it fits the mold of some of the recent winners. Not too flashy or dominant in one area, just consistent production up and down the lineup. So I would say that, yes, the majority of our scoring came from our first line, but in general, it's good to see that it was a bit of a spread the wealth mentality, not just one person having to carry and we have to hope for no injuries. It was a team effort this season. Speaking of that team effort, Pat comments, tremendous episode data. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Great to hear from one of our resident Canucks fans. With the Pacific Division win, I think it's safe to re-sign Pedersen. Trust me, this would be the most exciting result since 2012 for Vancouver. Any playoff success is gravy. Kind of happy as well that Beauvillier didn't get re-signed. We haven't extended him yet. 44 points on the second line is kind of lousy. I think he needs to walk after the season to focus on re-signing the big dogs in Elias and Heronic. Can't wait to beat down Chicago next time. I'll be waving my towel. Pat, thank you very much. So uh, one of the main things that we were brought in to do here by Vancouver ownership was to make sure that we build a team and put a product out in the ice that impresses our core to stay longer term. The headliner of that core obviously is Elias Pettersson, who's on an expiring deal as an RFA. He didn't have the best season of his career. Keep in mind that simulation is very different than the real world, but still 33 goals, 75 points. He was our first line center at Absolutely. He was all over the ice. He has a huge, huge role on this team. And now that we've won the Pacific Division, we're here in the postseason. Also considering that in the real world, it's a deal between Pedersen and the Canucks is potentially getting close. I think we can say that it's safe to sign him after the postseason, regardless of the result. Pat's other part of his comment was about Anthony Beauvillier. We've enjoyed having him. 44 points is more than we probably thought he would do, but that's when he was a third liner. He became a full-time second liner. He played a lot of ice time at 17 20 per night power play time shorthanded time and I'm not saying 44 points is horrible but it's not quite what we would need
need from a full-time top six player. In a perfect world, Beauvillier is on the third line and an actual 85, 86 overall kind of guy is in the top six with Dano and whoever else, let's say Besser, on the second line. So if Beauvillier's future on this team would be to be a third liner, that's fine, but he wants to get paid right now as a second liner, like over four million, which is not possible. So I'm not saying we're not re-signing him, but at the current wage demand he's asking for in his contract for his AAV, we can't afford that, so we may be letting him walk. Speaking of that second line, Joe touches upon it a little bit in his comment. Joe said, hey there, Data. Great video as always. Thank you, Joe. I don't have too much to add, but there are a couple of items on the agenda. Firstly, I don't think there's much to do when it comes to preparing the lineup for the postseason. After all, we are the Pacific Division champs for the first time in a decade, and we did it with Edler back in town. But secondly, I'd like to see Hoaglander on the second power play unit in place of Pud Colson. Hoaglander started the year on the power play. At the halfway point, we switched it to Pud Colson. Didn't really work out as much. Season stats show that Hoaglander was scoring, had scored five points in the first half of the season on the power play, but then when Pud Colson came in on the second half of the season, he only scored one point. So Hoaglander scored more, it gives him more ice time, let's put him on that second power play unit. And finally, Joe leaves some thoughts about, just in the future, when we're drafting, this is where I would ask you, the assistant general managers, to really keep note. For any potential storylines, we should always be careful to see where are we drafting the players from. If we draft players from the same team in the same draft, or one draft to another, we'll want to keep those storylines in mind, so we can say which players might be good fits to be together, and what long-term storylines are built. Looking forward to the next Canucks episode, Thursday's stupendous Starfleet stream. That would have been last night if you were watching live, but it's not too late if you didn't. Our live expansion franchise mode with the San Francisco Starfleet is also here on the channel, as well as Easton's career sim with the Leafs. Until next time, thank you very much for all that, Joe. So yes, I will go ahead and do that change. I already made it. Hoaglander, I think, will benefit from the ice time a little bit more, but Colson is more of a physical guy with the, I don't know, maybe the defensive attributes a tad, so I wouldn't mind Hoaglander being on the power play and then put Colson still getting his ice time, but doing so on the penalty kill. Now, before I end it off with my own thoughts to segue into the postseason, we'll go to one more comment, of course, from Cheating Heel over on YouTube saying, let's start with the obvious. That's a great thumbnail. Always love the thumbnail, love. Thank you, Cheating Heel. I work hard on those. My main concern going forward is the atrocious plus minus of that second line. I'm not sure what the fix is, but we need to improve something there. Maybe a Miller for Besser swap, put Colson up, Beauvillier down. A few different ideas there, but we gotta do something. I wouldn't try any moves to start the playoffs, but if at any time it looks as though we're going down, if we're down 0-3 or down 1-3, let's just blow up the lines and get put Colson and Hoaglander in the top six, maybe even top line with Pedersen, because if we have to go out, I want to see them having a serious opportunity to show us what they can bring in the future. If it means that Besser, Miller, Dano, whoever else is with Beauvillier on the third line for a short period, I'm okay with it, and we can see it as giving them an audition for next season. Absolutely. But that would be a last resort kind of thing. Depends on you know the situation that we're dealt with, injuries, and if we get desperate. We should also look at mixing it up on defense to have the best chemistry possible. We're facing tougher competition now, so the extra stat boost would be welcome. High five on both trades with Carolina. Thank you very much. Some thoughts on Matt Waugh and Thatcher Demko, but really what it comes down to is JT Miller, and and he's been somewhat of a deception. I get that he's not playing on the top line and his minutes have dropped, but 60 points is way too low for making 8 million a season. Dano, whose strength isn't his offensive production, had almost the same amount of goals, points, and has a better shooting percentage, playing a minute 20 less than Miller. Miller has to step up his game or we might have to explore trading him for younger and cheaper assets so we can put his cap space to good use. This season exceeded my expectations, but I'll say it again, we're still far from being contenders. At least there's a glimmer of hope that we might have some decent pieces to build around. Go Nux. Thank you very much, Cheating Heel. So with those thoughts, I think there's a middle ground. We don't need to blow things up and get Hoaglander and put Coles in a ton of ice time now in an audition just yet, but I do think that we can make a change in the lineup headed into the postseason. The second line has been atrocious. JT Miller had a plus minus of negative 13, Dano was negative 20, Bovidi wasn't really much better. We want to try mixing something up here. Meanwhile, Hoaglander, when he went from the fourth line to the third line in the second half, he had a great boost in production. He scored 20 goals. I'm loving what we're seeing from him. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. 
if JT Miller going to the top line gets him more ice time, can boost his production, and gives a plus five, let's try doing that. Brock Besser was great on that first line. He had an amazing season, but I want to try and spread the wealth a little bit heading into the postseason because I know it's, oh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This lineup won the Pacific Division, but at the same time, the second line was our biggest, most glaring hole by far. So if Besser comes to the second line, and but Dano is definitely not moving, that means does Beauvilliers stay on the second, and it's a zero actually, if they stay on their right wing, so that's good. Does Beauvilliers stay here? I would think let's try moving Hoaglander up. Beauvillier can get a plus two moving down a lineup but getting a plus two while Hoaglander no longer has the plus two but he's playing with much better uh, quality of line mates and he's gonna get a little boost in ice time. We're really gonna try to get him to get some growth out of you know 23 years of age now but Colson's grown from an 80 to an 81 but he's a year younger. Hoaglander we gotta put him on the accelerated timeline just a tad. So I think this will be our lineup to start the postseason here against Chicago. On defense not really much to do. We want to maximize chemistry, but there isn't much to do for it. Matt Roy could come up with Heronic just to get an additional plus one, but Heronic scored 54 points. He had a career year. I don't know if I want to move him just yet. It's good to keep in mind that we can go plus two and maybe even plus three if we bring Chatfield or Susie up, but for right now, I'm content with the defense. There's no negatives. No one was like glaringly atrocious. I think plus one, zero plus one is okay for our defensive pairs. Of course, of course, Thatcher Demko is our starter. DeSmith is backing him up, and we're ready to roll into the postseason. Ladies and gentlemen, facing one of our rivals in franchise history, the Chicago Blackhawks. A team that the Canucks saw a lot of about a decade ago as the Blackhawks were a dynasty and the Canucks were trying to get to that point, trying to get to that cup, but the Hawks kept getting in their way. On their road to the Stanley Cup final in 2011, the Canucks did beat the Blackhawks who were defending Stanley Cup champions in round number one, but it, we all know how that ended. So here we are in 2024. These two teams have met again. The Blackhawks are not an impressive team on paper, but they have the Connor Bedard effect. Connor Bedard is up to an 88 overall and he had an 88 point rookie season, 34 goals and 54 assists while averaging 20 47 of ice time per night. He is a monster out there. Taylor Hall on his left, uh, Taylor Radish on his right. Throughout the lineup, we see 81s and 80s everywhere else, even 70s, a couple guys in the 70s. Tyler Johnson, the second line center with Bailey and Perry. Athanasiu, Blackwell, and Felino on the third. Donato, Reichel, and Joey Anderson on the fourth. So not impressive depth-wise whatsoever. But they're in the postseason for a reason, and Connor Bedard has the ability to carry his team. On defense, we see, again, not really anything too impressive. Uh, Seth Jones at an 87 is the only guy who's not in the 77 to 82 overall range. Connor Murphy, 82, that's good. Korczynski has potential, but aside from that, not impressive. On the, Between the pipes, we have Maracic at an 82 overall. This season, his numbers weren't anything too crazy. 35 wins is very good, but in terms of his save percentage and his goals against average, it was, I'd say, about league average. 19 save percentage. You know what? I'll give him some credit here. In EA land, you can sometimes see goalies winning the Vezina with save percentages like this. So, actually a pretty good season for an 82 overall from Peter Maracic. So, Depth-wise, on paper, the two teams are not really comparable at all. We blow them out of the water every which way. But, again, we only won, what, five more games than the Blackhawks? They made it here, and they deserve as much respect as we do. So, we have our 47-30-5 and five record. They went 42-36-4, and four, and we are hosting them here at Rogers Arena for Game 1 of Round 1 of the 2024 postseason. The rekindling of a rivalry that has been dormant for the last 13 years. The Hawks won in 9 and 2010, but the Canucks came back in 2011 to win in seven games in round number one. Now, 13 years later in 2024, we're back at it again. Before I get started, just a quick disclaimer, as always, if it's your first time watching a postseason episode here on the channel, you'll see that the episode is something around an hour and 15 to an hour and 45 minutes long. I always change it up somewhere in that range to keep it exciting. The reason I do that is because if we lose in round number one, let's say in four games, and the video's over after 35 minutes, you're going to know that. You're not going to be excited for the episode. So although it does hurt the performance of the video, I do ask that if it is indeed an early exit and there's a black screen and some royalty-free classical music going for like an hour, just leave that running, muted or not, in your background. It would very much help the video and I'd appreciate it a lot. But if you don't, that's okay too, because I'd rather that we both react to this live, we both be on the edge of our seats, we both be excited and not 
ah, I want to get excited for the comeback, but I see the video's over in 10 minutes and it's, you know, I know it can't happen. That's what I always hated when I would watch franchise mode videos. So I hope that you can enjoy it with me and react with me along the way. I know there's a lot of new viewers here for the Canucks series, so I just wanted to go ahead and say that. But all that being said, let's get started. Game one, round one of year number one, the 2024 postseason in Vancouver at Rogers Arena, Canucks, Blackhawks, let's hit it. First period, 2-2 after 20. Joey Anderson opens up the scoring down on that fourth line, but Alex Edler, welcome back to the postseason, my friend. The longest serving Canuck on the team right now. He scores the first goal of our postseason, and Elias Pettersson, about four minutes after that, makes it a 2-1 game, but Taylor Hall, late in the first period, ties it up. Shots are 10-9 in our favor, and we're all tied up at two after 20. Second period now, 3-2 Canucks, as Studnika, let's go! Studnika puts us up, centering that third line love to see it shots are 19 to 17 in our favor he was a healthy scratch for half the season we got him in the lineup and you know what he's been on a great pace ever since i love this man we're up by one but Corey perry 14 seconds in ties it up but then brock besser gets his first of the postseason after his great bounce back year this year Four, three Canucks, we're back in the lead. As we're into the final 10 minutes or so now, power play for the Blackhawks. It's an extended opportunity and we kill that off. Huge penalty kill with five minutes to go. Hanging on tight. Shots are very close as well. Into the final minute. No! Donato ties it up with a minute 14 left. Two goals from their fourth line as they get Anderson and Donato. Oh, with a minute 14 left, we were right there. Shots end 31 to 30, and it's a 4-4 game headed into overtime. Overtime here in Vancouver, game one, round one. Next player to score puts his team up 1-0 in this first round series. Taylor Hall to Bedard scores! Wow! Quick snipe from Bedard and it's over just like that. Oh my goodness, his first career postseason goal is a game winner. What a snipe, leaving Demko in the dust. Sheesh, Connor Bedard, Hall, Bedard, pff, can't get the blocker on it and that's it. Left completely open. Pff, make it snappy. Wow. Gotta give it to him, gotta give it to the kid, nice goal. So, shots end tied at 31, and we choke it up by one in the final couple minutes. We get scored on by the fourth line, and then Bedard wins it in overtime. So, a tough game to, lo to lose. Five to four, especially being up by one late. But let's try and wipe it away. We know that we can be the better team. We scored four. That's great. We just got to not allow five. We got to, if we can just allow two or three and know that we can keep scoring four or five ourselves, we'll be in a much better spot. So let's shake it off. We haven't been in the postseason for a long time. Game two, still at home in Vancouver. Let's get right back into it. First period, 1-1 one, one after 20. Corey Perry, his second, opens it up. Then Kuzmenko, our point-per-game MVP, opens up our scoring and ties it up at one on the power play. Shots 14-8 for Chicago after 20. Brock Besser, 38 seconds in, makes it 2-1 early in the second period. Simming through the second period, now it ends 2-1. That's the lone goal. Thank you, Brock. Second goal in as many games for him. 23-21 to 21 are the shots in our favor after 40. What's with all these early goals? Athanasiu scores, and then Reichel scores right after. These bottom 6, 80 overall guys ridiculous 3-2 uh, Blackhawks just like that but okay Philip Ronick gets a big goal to tie this game back up let's go gentlemen we know that we're better Corey Perry is third goal in two games oh my goodness don't do it to me EA don't do it to me Athanasiu has two goals in two games Corey Perry three goals in two games come on back to back five goals against on Thatcher Demko Whoa, la la, come on now. Come on now. I don't know if I want to wait for a lot of worst case scenario stuff here. I want to make changes after two games. Down to nothing. To nothing. You thought it was crazy that the Canucks made the playoffs? This Blackhawks team made the playoffs. Come on now. Plus five on this first line. They're okay enough, but even the negative. No, the plus minus, negative two, negative three. The first line is getting scored on by these bottom 680 overall guys. No points for Hoaglander, no, uh, two assists for Doe, excuse me. Two goals and assists for Besser. He's killing it. He's amazing. Beauvillier, Studnika, Petkolzin. The fourth line isn't even that bad. It's the first line with their plus five. They have the worst plus minus. So I guess let's go back to what we had. Besser back here, Miller back here, 
But I might think about keeping Hoaglander instead of Beauvillier, though. They seem to be doing okay on this third line with the plus two. So I'm going to say let's keep it like that. At least that still gives us a change to the second line. On defense, what's up over here? What? Negative six for Quinn Hughes? Whoa! Everyone else is a plus or a zero. Whoa, boy! Down, boy! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're off the first... I don't care if you're the captain. You're off the first pair. You're off. Oh, maybe that doesn't help. No, no, you're off. I don't care. You're off. Uh, let's go Susie. Let's go big defense on that first pair. He's a plus two as well. Let's go Hughes and Chatfield plus three on the second unit. And Edler and Iwak can be on the third pair there. Okay. And Demko with his 848 save percentage needs to pick it up before DeSmith gets a start over here. Because he had a great season, DeSmith did. Okay, there are our line changes. I don't think we'll touch anything else. Phil, buddy, you got to rally the troops here. Phil with his Stanley Cup rings filling up his hand. Come on now. I don't even want to look at Chicago stats. I don't want to look at how these guys have two, three goals each, five points on the fourth line. So let's calm it down now. Let's calm it down. Here at United Center in Chicago, game three, we lose both at home. Now we have a couple games on the road. Let's win both of these, make it a best of three. I'm willing to forget about it. The past is the past. I'm willing to forget about it, especially you, Quinn Hughes. I'm willing to forget about it. But you got to show me that you have some passion here in game number three. If you go down three nothing and allow five plus goals against this team for a third consecutive game... I know that this isn't the squad. It's okay. It's okay. You're just not built for it. It's okay. No offense to you. You're just not able to do it. But if you can actually put on your big boy pants and show me that you can do it, tonight's the game to show me. Early power. First period, 1-1. One, one. All right. Quinn Hughes, there he is. The captain. Come on. His first postseason as captain. You got to be leading the troops out there, buddy. Nick Foligno also scoring not long after to tie the game up. Shots are 15 to 6, but we're tied at 1 after 20 here in Chicago. Second period action. We're tied at 2. A goal apiece once again. Connor Murphy scores. Then Carson Soucy up on that top pair. He's loving those minutes. All right. Good for you, buddy. I love it. Two defensive defensemen scoring in the second period. Shots are 31 to 18, but it's a tight 2 2 game headed into the third period. This next 20 minutes will decide the series, in my opinion. Power play Vancouver killed off by the Blackhawks. Momentum back in their favor. We're close to doubling their shots into the final 10 minutes now. Let's see who can be heroic. Power play Blackhawks. Extended late opportunity. We kill it off. That's a huge penalty kill. But Rose, the 77 overall on the third pair D. The 77 overall on the third pair defense. Scores the game winning goal. On the tw in, with less than 30 shots. 44 to 28. You're kidding me. 42 saves from 82 overall Maracic. This is classic EA. This is prime EA. Perfect example. Oh my goodness. I forget. There was a comment that said it. I'm going gonna, gonna to put it up if I can find it. Someone just said that this is like prime EA material for a series that could just ruin us. Oh, absolutely ridiculous. This is crazy. All right, time to blow it up. Time to blow it up. He was a negative two. Heronic, a negative two. Oh, ne how? All right, we're going uh, Matt Lua is coming to the top pair. Let's go Matt Lua and Carson Seuss is going to be the top pair. Unless uh, we need a zero here. Can Chatfield go here and here go? No, negative two. There's always a negative somewhere. All right, Quinn Hughes, you get to play third pair. Congrats. Third, with Hirona. Both of you are going to play third pair because you're both atrocious defensively. Great. Uh, Susie, yeah, that can be our top pair. Susie and Chatfield. Congrats, gentlemen. You get top pair minutes. Demko with your 861 save percentage. Goodbye. DeSmith comes in. Uh, what else can we do here? Uh, let me Actually, let me just look through who's been good and who hasn't been good. I'll make some changes. And here we go. Here's our lineup. Miller, Dano, Besser on the first line. Pedersen, you're down on the second line with your negative five. That's not going to help your contract negotiations. Kuzmenko, Pedersen, and Phil Kessel. Let's get you on the second line, buddy. Why not? Before retirement, maybe. Third line, Podkolzin, Studnika, and Bovidi can stay. They've been the only non-negative line, I guess. And fourth line, Lafferty, Suter, and Hoaglander are going to go down to the fourth line. No points, playing almost 15 minutes per night. I don't need everything from him, but I would like to see something aside from just negative one with 15 minutes per night through three games. Defense, we already saw it, and goaltending, DeSmith is starting. So, 
There you go. What a shame. These are the moments I'd love to just exit out. I haven't recorded much. I could just restart right here and just try for a better sim and go win the cup. But, you know, that's not realistic. We got... But you know what? That's not how the franchise mode works. We've got to roll with it. If we want to get back into this, we got to win four consecutive games. It's been done before. It's definitely doable in EA land. Game four here in Chicago. We had such a good season. We proved the haters wrong. We did things that hadn't been done for over a decade. And now here we are about to get swept by a team that has no one higher than like an 81, an 82 overall if you take out their top three players. Does that not, like, embarrass you? Are you not embarrassed when you hear that? But, you know what? I'll give you one last chance before I publicly shame you. Let's go. Game four in Chicago. Let's see who wants to be here. First period, 2-0. That's what I like to see. P.S. Patrick Kane Suter opens it up, and then Elias Pettersson on the second line is woken up. Come on now. 13-10 to 10 of the shots through 20, and we're up by two. Thank you very much. Second period now, and it's 5-0. There it is. Hey! Bon matin tout le monde! Bon matin! Réveillez-vous! Everybody's awake now! Phil Kessel scores on the second line. I knew that was going to happen. Could have put the mortgage on that one. Phil Kessel scores on the second line. Just an absolute beast. A freak of nature. Loves the postseason. He got his ice time. He gets his goal. And then JT Miller scores twice. We're up 5-0. Five, 5 goals on 25 shots. This is the Canucks team that we know. Come on now. 6 nothing. put Coles in. Thank you very much. Touchdown. Oh my goodness, and shut out or not, Casey DeSmith looking way more solid than Demko has looked, so at least, no matter what, and the extra point is good, as Kessel scores his second, oh my goodness, at least we know that we did what we could, and we had a good rally in game number four, as we're even being outshot, but the game will end 7-0 the final, 34 save shutout for Casey DeSmith, does that not blow your mind? We win 7 nothing after getting embarrassed the first three games. Pedersen, a goal and four assists. JT Miller scores twice. And Casey DeSmith, a 34 save shutout. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Plus four. Anyone not a plus? Only three non-plus players. I know on the first line, but we'll take it. Oh my goodness. What about in Chicago? Who, who are the big negatives here in a 7 nothing game? <laughs> All right, just curious. 7 nothing to get ourselves back in this series. One down. Hey, that's one. One down, three to go. That's the first step. I believe in this team. I believe in this team. They were embarrassed. I dressed them down a little bit. I was ready to put out a statement in the newspaper, but I held back. And for good reason, it looks like. Let's get the Smith back in there. And it looks like, at the very least, we have some life. We want to see life from this squad. Game five here back in Vancouver. One down, three to go. One game at a time. Those line changes seem to work. Kessel scored twice. Incredible. Let's keep up the pace back at home in front of the home fans. First period, one nothing Blackhawks. Taylor Hall scores. Shots 14 to 8 in our favor through 20, but we are down by one. Second period, 1-1. One, one. Thank you, Alex Edler. The defense, let's go. Forget Hughes. Forget Hirona. Give me Edler. Give me Susie. Come on now. Shots are 26 to 22 through 40 minutes. We're down to the final period. We're tied at one. We need some big, big offense here in this third period to get us ahead. Extended power play to start the period. Another power <laughs> Joey Anderson, 77 overall, scores shorthanded. Oh, are you not embarrassed? Are you not embarrassed? Pause. Are you not embarrassed? We had, let's see, holding minor, slashing minor. So 1832 to 1632, you had a two-minute power play. Then 1545 to 1345. So essentially, you had four minutes of power play over a span of time that was less than five minutes. And what do you do? You give up a shorthanded goal to a 77 overall. Incredible. Shots are 35 to 33, and we're down by one. Let's hop in and see how this one wraps up. Like, just look at these ratings. 91 offense to 87. 91 defense to 84. And the goaltending, I missed it there, but much larger on that side as well. I'm not, not shortening the bench. I'm not calling a timeout. I'll take care of that when it gets closer. Let's go. Into the final. 452 now. Down by one. Here comes Blackwell. There you go. Score a nice goal. Come on. Where's the urgency? Tie up. Hall gets it off the draw. Can't get it at the point, though. Here's Deneau over to Susie. Let's move it up. There you go. Delete pen. Okay. Power play coming up. Okay. Here's Besser moving in. A little backhand. We're actually going to save that. 
power play now. This is huge. This is huge. It's Connor Bedard. Woo! Two for tripping. Their best player. I don't know if he's even on the penalty kill, but their best player is out for two minutes, and we're going to have a great opportunity here to try and tie this game up. Yeah, as he, that, that's a trip. It's a trip. Okay, let's see if we can do anything. Besser, Miller, Pedersen are all out against Blackwell and Foligno. Hughes, Hironic. This is our chance. This has been a beautiful gift. We're 0 for 4 in the power play tonight. Hironic, take a shot. Besser, big save sliding across there from Maracic. Besser, pinned in the corner, kicks it over to Pedersen. Behind the net, gets to the point to Quinn Hughes. Hughes on net is blocked. Hironic down low to Pedersen. Hughes back at the point, skates low, but that pass is broken. I'm JT Miller in the slot. Good save as he still has it. Miller in front, Maracic will hang on. And we're getting that pressure going, the new pressure system. I like to see it. Miller at the dot, wins it back. Very nice to Ronick. Now here's Hughes. Come on, use that space. Oh my, don't tell me he went out of the zone. Oh, <laughs> you can't even keep it on side on the power play. Miller wins it back to Hughes. One timer! <laughs> Glove save, Maracic sliding across to Rob Pedersen with a great one time opportunity. He had the whole open side. Great save. 32 seconds left in the power play. Dano, win it, buddy. Come on, a little tie up. Bovini gets it. Very good. Hronik over to Hughes at the point, back to Hronik, on oh, net tip, big save, good tip in front, very good. Kuzmenko to the, what? Hugh, what? You just let it go by? Oh my goodness, the, no, Hronik, pick up the puck. Just uh, hit his skate and kept skating for the bench like a drone. Hughes, there you go, everybody scores, I forgive you, Quinn, I forgive you for being a mindless AI drone, I forgive you. Elias Pedersen ties it up on the power play, thank goodness, his third of the postseason, and we have life, we're back in it. Hughes puts it on net, and Pedersen's there on the rebound as he continues skating full speed into the mesh. Oh, thank goodness, we get something. Whew, we're all tied up, and it's not over yet, though. Chicago taking a timeout now after that big pony kill. Bedard's going to be back on the ice. This game is not over yet. Big t uh, ninth point of the postseason for Pedersen as Malkin and Crosby are at the top there. 2.37 to go in overtime, and we're all tied up at 2. Defensive zone draw here. We get it. Here's Phil Castle looking great, number 81 with Vancouver. Skating towards the boards, taking his time, finding space. In front of him, scores! Elias Pedersen! And the Canucks are back up! Phil Kessel weaving magic at the blue line. He has his second of the night and fourth of the postseason, and the Canucks are up. Oh my! Phil Kessel just casts a spell with those big, beautiful eyes. Casts a spell on the Chicago defense, makes his way through, and he finds Pedersen, who scores his second goal. Pedersen has the game tying goal and the go ahead goal. Kessel and Kuzmenko getting the assist, and we are in the lead with under two minutes to go now. And now Pedersen to Matt Hua, put it on that buddy, glove save Maracic, he'll give it out, JT Miller picks it up, now here's Edler, Miller down low, gives it up to Matt Hua, one timer, that's blocked by Hall, and here come the Blackhawks, Taylor Hall on a breakaway, the series may be on his stick, and he scores! <laughs> oh my goodness, what a game! Oh! A blocked shot that turns into a breakaway and Taylor Hall ties this game up. Wow, what a clutch goal from Taylor Hall. A little flip over the blocker. Oh my goodness, that's a real backbreaker. And we're all back tied up at three. One eleven to go. Stunika wins it to Chatfield. Let's go. Stunika, he has some room. Stunika! Big save from Ratchik. Stunika, one timer stop. And a power play. Let's go! A slash there on Connor Murphy. Their best defensive defenseman, most likely. I'd say even better than Seth Jones. That's a big loss for them on the penalty kill. Uh, last time we got a penalty, we got a huge goal. Let's try and do it again. Ah, he slashed Bovili on the one timer. I see. All right, so despite the game just being tied up, we have another opportunity here. What a wild third period as we are on the power play with a minute and four seconds to go in the third period. We're one for five on the power play with 15 shots. JT Miller, backhand rebound. Kick save there on the doorstep. Magic will hang on. Pedersen, short angle, nice to try to try and put it over the shoulder. In front! Ratchet gets across the crease. He is doing miracles for this Blackhawks team with 25.1 seconds to go. Miller wins the faceoff, very good. Ronick, Pedersen, Besser on net, and Ratchet makes the save. 
Bronick over to Hughes. Quinn Hughes on net kick at the shot away. Fandon, there's like three Blackhawks there. And Korchinski is tripped, of course, and here comes the penalty. So there goes the power play. Final seconds, will we get to overtime? No, we won't. Final 1.6 seconds. Uh, there goes the power play. As now we will be on the penalty kill to start overtime. As Elias Pettersson's gone for two minutes for tripping. Wonderful. We already saw it, so I'm going to go ahead and skip the replay. Let's just win this defensive zone draw and call it a period. Let's head into overtime. Defensive zone for Miller. He wins it back, and there you go. So we make it to overtime, ladies and gentlemen, from down 2-1 to tying it up 3-3. There's a lot of action on both sides of the rink. Very exciting third period. Shots are 56. <laughs> 56 to 37 and we're all tied up headed into our first hopefully and only overtime of game number five a goal for the Canucks and we have a 3-2 series headed back to Chicago a goal for the Blackhawks and they move on to round number two four on four for 56 seconds and then a Blackhawks power play Final five seconds of the four on four. Bedard over to Hall. Breakaway Taylor Hall. He's been here before, but this time Smith knows how to stop him. Well done. Power play for about a minute now for the Blackhawks. Reichel down low. Oh my goodness. I think Bailey got in the way of Donato's shot there. Bailey glove save to Smith. Woo. That was too close for comfort. Lafferty on the dot here. Shot 6 0 for the Blackhawks in overtime. Big face off win, and we're back to 5 on 5. Very well done. Great. And now we're back to even strength for the first time. But with the one timer, Pedersen out of the box. He takes a good shot. Mrachik making miracles, getting close to facing 60 shots. That's number 57. Chatfield looking to skate it out of his zone. He does. Here's Beauvillier. He has a little bit of speed. Let's go, Beauvillier. Over there, put Colson. Big blocker save from Maracic. Great chance from Put Colson. Blackhawk now down to Athanasiu, who has a lane down the wing. Athanasiu broken up by Dano. Bien fait, mon ami. Here's Dano. He gets tripped. There you go. Beautiful. Power play coming up. 15.51 to go. Andreas, Andreas Athanasiu off to the sin bin for two minutes. Another tripping penalty. Always the good old trips in EA land. Let's get the first, second unit power play out with the first defensive pairing. All righty. JT taking a lot of face-offs tonight. Wins it back to Hua at the point. Can he keep it in? Yes, he can. Not for long. And then he trips his man. <laughs> and then he goes and crushes him after he just tripped him. Oh, the tripping penalties. It's only tripping ever. Fourth tripping penalty since we've hopped into the sim. Matt Hua, there goes our power play. Like, what does the AI think? Why are you trying to do poke checks from behind? Since when in the NHL do poke checks from behind ever result in anything? Not that they result in trips, but when do they result in successfully getting the puck? Kraczynski just the entire... Hey, he broke the... Whoa! I think that's the first time I've ever seen that in an in-game simulation. Korchinski has the whole net to shoot at all alone. Nobody wants to stop him, and he still misses and breaks the glass. All right, a little bit of a rest there. Four on four for another 17 seconds. Blackhawks gonna win that draw. Roos over to Korchinski, back to Roos. He has a nice open lane as well. Thank goodness, a nice blocker save from DeSmith. Nobody likes getting in the open lanes, I suppose. Let's just cover our man and let the goalie deal with it, right? One timer, a piece of the glove on that by DeSmith. Bailey has a chance skating in. Can't quite squeeze it through. Chatfield's gonna clear it out. I noticed the clearings are very odd compared to previous NHLs. It's like they're doing really high. <laughs> Oh, yay! And Mark was at the bench hunched over after he took the tripping penalty. That's it! That's all! Five game series and the Canucks are eliminated in round number one by the lowly Chicago Blackhawks. Of course, no one's surprised, right? As Josh Bailey wins it in overtime after we had like over 60 shots. Peter Dominic Hasek Maracic. After the big comeback and everything. And then giving up that Taylor Hall breakaway. A super weak goal on Bailey. Shots and 62 to 51. No one wants to stop him. Three guys here on Reichel. But let's leave Bailey and. Who's this? Bailey and. Dana, who is it? Athanasiu. Bailey and Athanasiu. Let's leave them on their own. Just walk in. And there you go. Boop. Already down in Butterfly. Just wait for it. There you go. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. What a disappointing series. Like I said at the beginning, it's hard to be super disappointed when we had such a successful season. Anything now is gravy. But I'd rather we lose either A, against a good team, or like B, in tight games. Yes, it was a 3-2 loss, a 5-4... Two of our losses came in overtime, yes. But there were games that we should have won. We outshot our opponent. We had a 7-0 blowout victory. We had the potential to do so much more. But we were not clinical. We were facing a brick wall. Part of it is EA, where we're facing 80 overalls who are scoring a goal per game. And part of it is the goaltending, where Maracic is an 82 overall, who I'd love to see the save percentage. I cannot wait. I know that 7-0 game would have really hurt it, but I'm confident that it's still going to be incredible. Here's Taylor Hall, Tyler Johnson, two point-per-game players. Johnson, 81 overall, going point-per-game. No problem. Maracic, despite allowing seven goals in one game over a five-game span, still has over a 900 save percentage. If we take away the seven goals against, let's just look at those other three games. If we take away the seven goals against, he had just 12 goals against in four games, allowing three goals against on average, which is still a bit high than, higher than you'd like, but a save percentage, I'm 100% sure, would have been like 910, 915, something like that, maybe even 920 plus. 82 overall, 80 poise, Peter Maracic. Making like, what, 59 saves in game five? Incredible. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Let's get, let's get to our stats. Elias Pedersen scored 10 points in five games. Hats off to you, buddy. You did a great job. If we have a player scoring more than double, uh, scoring double than the highest score on the other team and we still lose, there's something wrong. 10 points. You have Johnson and uh, Hall scoring five each. Pedersen with 10, Kuzmenko with five, Hughes with five. Three point per game plus players. Miller, four. Kessel, even with four points in five games. Phil! Besser, three. Beauvillier, three. Edler had a couple goals. Down here, who are the disappointments here? Hoaglander, no points in five games. Dano, two assists and a negative three in five games. Ridiculous. We need a new coach here. Hronik, two points and a negative four. At least that, that one game for Hughes with the, uh, the seven goals helped out. But he was like a negative seven, right? Wow. All these negatives. Incredible. And then you look at the goaltending. Thatcher Demko goes 0-2-1 with an 861 save percentage and 4.39 goals against average. While Casey DeSmith has to go 1-0-1 with a shutout. 952 save percentage and 2.15 goals against average. As we lose in five games in round number one to the Chicago Blackhawks. Are you not embarrassed? Like, that's the headline. Just one huge word, all bold, embarrassing. This was embarrassing. Not the fact of losing, no, but the way in which it came. Against this quality of team, with our quality of team, embarrassing. So that being said, go home, hit the links, just rethink life, write some poetry, clear your head. Let's sim to the draft, or at least to the end of the postseason, and see what the rest of the league has to offer from now until June. So in the end, your 2024 Stanley Cup champions are the New Jersey Devils. Makes sense in the simulation. I'm glad it was actually a team that's good and that could win the cup. You could see in the real world as opposed to just always being Toronto or whoever else. Salary cap moving up, all that good stuff. Let's see the retirements and the draft lottery and everything. Whoa! Ottawa jumps from 9 to 1 in the draft lottery to get Celebrini or whoever else. Woo! Congratulations, Ottawa Senators fans. Ottawa jumps from 9 to 1, not even with their own pick. Their own pick's in 14th with Detroit's first round pick, I guess, from the Debrinket trade? Wow! Wow. Montreal second. Seattle drops from 1 to 3. That hurts. Nashville 3 to 4. Everyone else by one spot down the list there. My God. Goodness, what a draft lottery. Uh, last couple of things here to go through. Retired players in 2024. Who's calling it? Of course, Joe Thornton, Simmons, Dubinsky, a lot of the free agent players. I don't think anyone who's actually on a team, it looks like. Just uh, Kampfer on the Coyotes. And goalies retiring, Enroth and Lindback. Two <laughs> just legends. Coach retirements, no one for the Canucks. Alrighty. Kampfer is now a scout. All right, with the Coyotes. Great. The only guy retiring with uh, with an NHL affiliation. I'm going to do a few draft interviews. Or he gets even Iserman, actually. The Senators could get Iserman. 
I'm going to go ahead and do some interviews. I didn't really scout any top, top players because I knew that we wouldn't have a top, top pick, but I will use the interviews to try to uncover some other information about players that we may be in the area of drafting. All right, taking care of that. Let's keep on simulating forward. And here we are now at the draft. So let's check it all out for the 2023-24 season. Looking at the playoff tree, the Blackhawks did not do anything. So we get beaten by five in five games by the Blackhawks. Then they lose in six to the Golden Knights, who go on to beat the Stars in five and get swept by the Devils in four. Meanwhile, the Devils have a six-game series in round one and two, and then sweep their way through the Eastern Conference Final and the Stanley Cup Final. So congratulations, New Jersey, well done. Let's check out the awards in the 2023-24 season. The Devils win the Cup, the Avalanche win the President's Trophy, Vegas back-to-back -back Clarence S. Campbells as they got to another Stanley Cup final, and the Prince of Wales, of course, to New Jersey. Individual awards, the Art Ross going to Austin Matthews, as well as the Hart Memorial. James Norris going to Kale McCarr, Lady Bing to Kucherov, so nothing for Pedersen or Kuzmenko. Calder, of course, to Connor Bedard. Con Smythe to Nico Hiche, how about that, the captain. Vezina to Vasilevsky, Jennings to Shuster. Masterton to Colton Pareko, Jack Adams to the coach of the Blackhawks, makes sense. Frank J. Selke, the Ryan O'Reilly Award, goes to Ryan O'Reilly. Ted Lindsay to Matthews, and the Morris Richard to Kucherov. Anything down in the AHL? Benson winning a bunch of awards. Uh, no, nothing for any of our players in Abbotsford. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 draft. This is where we will pick up next episode when we get into the 2024 offseason. You know, expectations were not high for 2023-24, but we smashed them. We won the division. Now there will be some expectations in the 2024-25 season. We got to make sure that we're ready for them. So headed into the 2024 offseason, the bio penalty still seems to be at 0.147 million. I'm not sure if that will change on July 1st, but in the real world, that's going up to over 2 million for the actual bio penalty for Oliver Ekman Larson. So we got to keep that in mind. We're going to add that ourselves to the actual penalty or to be a self-imposed penalty i suppose elias Pettersson at this point is looking for seven by nine point seven seven five eight by ten if we go up to eight years i wouldn't mind going to eight years and if we go 85 percent, that's around 8.5 million so maybe you know jt miller is making eight other stars in the nhl of his caliber i think are in that nine million conversation ten million conversation i wouldn't mind doing something like eight by nine point five ish so what are your thoughts on elias Pettersson? i think it's safe to say that we will resign him but what deal is fair for him same for philip heronic who is looking for ooh, five by nine so we're definitely going to just qualify Heronic and then we'll sign him later when he's cheaper. But the question is, what is that cheaper number? Are we happy at seven? Are we happy at six? Are we happy at five? Let me know about that as well. Anthony Beauvillier, he wants two at, th you know what, I could do that. Even one year, one year, like 2.5 million to stay on the third line. I could do that for Beauvillier. Does it eat up time for other players though? That's the bigger question. We got to think, yes, we could sign him, but what does our lineup look like next season? Alex Edler, do we bring him back for another little run? Bit expensive, I have to admit. I wouldn't mind bringing back Kessel. Myers is gone, but Colson's going to need a contract. He wants a cheap enough deal to stay as an RFA as well. Chatfield, I think, comes back as well. Oh, he wants big money. These, I hope it changes after the draft. It could. But that's too. That's, that's a lot for a depth defenseman. Studnika wants to get paid a little bit as well. Goaltending, we have DeSmith expiring now. Another question, do we roll with Casey DeSmith as our backup? Again, headed into next season, paying pay him like 1.75 or something. Or do we look at promoting Silovs from the AHL, who has medium starter potential and would be happy to sign for like two years at two-way at one million? Could we do that? He can kind of be a bit over his head, but hopefully it'll like you know encourage growth. Or do we look at DeSmith, who was not only a great backup, but he was the only semblance of hope that we had in the postseason. So keep those thoughts in mind. As well as the potential pending free agents. Many of these players won't actually drop to free agency, but if we look at the potential UFAs for this upcoming free agency class, we see big 90 plus overall guys. Pavelski, Kane, even Montour's at a 91. Wow. Nylander, Stamkos, Lindholm, Gensel, Toffoli. So many big names could be hitting free agency here. 
So really keep note of these potential names. If you're in the Discord server, this is going to be the time where I would be turning to you to say, hey, listen, this guy we thought might not drop is actually there. Do we go after him? Would we be able to free up the money to do it? There's a few different things that might have to happen. That is where the on-call assistant general managers come in to help. Looking at the growth this season, Kuzmenko's grown up to an 88 overall. We'll see if he keeps it, but great to see him at an 88. Suter dropped down to a 78, but Colson's at an 81. We knew that. Besser's up to an 85. Holgander's up to an 81. Beauvillier up to an 83. Lafferty down to a 79. I don't think anyone else. Ah, Hronik up from 86 to 87. I think that's about it. If we look in the system, any big growth here? Lakaramaki's at a 72 after this season. Jet Wu at a 74. Ratu at a 77. Willander at a 77 as well. Those are the big names. All right, good to keep note of. Not much change for our goaltenders. And finally, we can think about draft thoughts. We can think about who might be at our different selections. In this draft, we have our first, no second, then a couple of thirds. So we pick at number 25. Unfortunately, that's so late. First round pick at number 25. Our thirds are in like late 80s, it looks like. So don't need to worry about those as much. But just a few players you might want to look at targeting. Let's scroll through the draft class. Anyone who's unknown, I just didn't scout the top players because I didn't. In year number one, I don't have the best scouts and those scouting assignments take longer. So I didn't spend as much time looking at the top, top guys. But as you can see here, like this medium guy, number 10, Timu Piorola, number NHL ready with an A shooting. Like This would be crazy at number 10 with some of the created players here in like the real world players that we had to create like Iserman and Celebrini and Cole Hudson, the brother of Lane Hudson. That adds to the draft class and gives us more medium lead kind of guys here at 14, at 15. Jerome McGinley's son, you got Clark Caswell, medium lead guys at 14, 15. Do we look at making a trade from 25 up to 14, 12, something like that? I don't know. After that, there's medium top six. There's a lot of real players. It's fun to get someone who's real. Caden Lindstrom, six foot four, power forward, medium top six. It'll be fun to get one of these guys that we can put a real face to, but it's not necessary. So a bunch of medium top six forwards, medium top four D. If you want to know more about anyone else, just let me know in the comments or on Discord. I'll get you a picture. I'll look at their information. I'll check as well for anyone who's NHL ready. So at 25, sorry, I jumped through our spot here. At 25, it looks like we would get like maybe Caden O'Brien. That would be a guy who's, oh, one year away with a plus shooting as a power forward oh this could be our guy Caden O'Brien son of Miles Edward O'Brien maybe we trade up one spot to guarantee that we get him but this could be the guy actually Caden O'Brien could be let me just check who the NHL ready players are of course all the top guys but Piero is NHL ready after that O'Brien being one year away is the shortest of anybody else. Everyone's two or three years away after Piorola. Then there's even Henry Muse, who's one year away. Offensive defenseman, A minus shooting, A minus puck skills. Similar to Mark Edward Vlasic, despite being an offensive defenseman. Okay, from the Ottawa 67s. Consta Hellenius, of course, a real world prospect, one year away, similar to Marcus Nasland, Canucks legend. A shooting, decent stats in an A plus league. Good to keep note of him as well, with medium top six potential. Even though there's no one else who's one year away or NHL already, a lot of these guys, like, look into the 30s even, are only two years away. Usually they're three, four, five years away in future drafts at this point. So two years away in, like, the second round, that's really something. Two years away, Jem, Justin Poirier, of course. After that, it looks like everyone's about three years away. All right, so we'll keep note of those guys. If, in terms of just players who have potential, only medium leads are the top, top guys. The I got one lower lead here, okay, Mikhail Lindholm. Uh, then some medium top sixes here. So my scouting method is always, you know, that's the way to go. It's tried and true. It is consistent. But in year number one, A, I was distracted. So I missed, honestly, like a few weeks here and there. But B, there's a lot of D minus scouts and stuff like that. So it's hard to scout as many players. So those guys who are low elite in the 300s, we didn't get to them in this draft. We will in future drafts. Jorgen Svensson, 17 years old, could be a guy five years away. He would likely have good potential, but... Yeah, not going to be a high overall. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Year number one in the books for this franchise mode series. A fantastic regular season that led to just an embarrassing exit out of round number one. But hopefully we'll come back stronger. Hopefully the holes in our lineup, those plus minuses, those spots we definitely need to fill will be filled in the off season, whether it be through free agency or trades or whatever else. So let me know your thoughts. Who needs to move out? Who needs to get re-signed? What kind of position, even if you don't have a name in particular, needs to be signed? 
mind. We could dip into our watch listed players, players that have been suggested throughout the series so far that I went ahead and watch list. All these players that you see on the list before you are players that the assistant general managers have suggested at one time or another. So feel free to look through this list as well. Some of these would have to be traded for, others might be in free agency. As we can see, anyone with one year left, all these guys are either that we can get them for super cheap at the draft or going for free agency. But I wouldn't mind trading for some rights. That would be pretty cheap if we want to go that route. But always keep in mind, what would our lineup be? So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to watch this postseason. There will be some black screen here at the end. So if you want to let that run a little bit, it would be very much appreciated. But I hope that you enjoyed the postseason a little bit more because it's there. Be sure to leave your thoughts down here in the YouTube comments or over on the Discord server, the link in the description. Keep an eye out for the upcoming off season in the Discord server, especially if you get that notification that I'm going into free agency and I need your help. I'm looking forward to the assistant general managers adding their live thoughts. There's a lot to think about headed into the 2024 postseason, so I'll leave you there. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. I'm looking forward to reading all of your thoughts and seeing you again in the next one as we look to build this team even stronger headed into year number two.